Okay, call Allah you mother Paul Raf Yahu, Basham Yahu Shah, Basham Rakakudash. That's all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High, whose true name is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. All right, I'd like to give double honors to my elders and apostles of Great Millstone, which are those mighty men that's been laboring for over 20 plus years, uh, teaching his truth, teaching uh, the, the true gospel, uh, this, the true message of the Bible, uh, the true narrative uh, of uh, the pastors that are feeding the flock according to the Most High's knowledge. As written in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 15, I'd like to give honors and salutations to you, sincere Akim, you sincere brothers, you sisters that believe, you know, everyone that's listening to these videos, that's repenting and seeking the Lord while he may be found, uh, and, and repenting and coming back in all truth and obedience, man, shalom to you and your households, all right, and um, this video, you know, I'm just in the spirit, and this this clip is uh, when I was out on the highways and byways a couple days ago. You know, I had these two Jakes that came up, uh, and, and the first one, well, both of them actually, you know, they had a lot to say. You know, they had a lot of, they were doing a lot of babbling, a lot of uh, vain philosophy, vain opinions. You know, these these, these guys were basically know-it-alls, and I'm being very facetious when I say that. These guys didn't know a damn thing, but they, they think they knew everything, though, okay? And... You know, I was just thinking uh, a few minutes ago as I was coming in before I started putting this lesson together, I was just thinking, man, you have to you have to be like a child to to, to inherit the kingdom of heaven first go around, man, which is that that kingdom of the Israelites, which is what the Lord is coming back to establish when he comes back. All right. And that that parable that he gave in Matthew 18, which is what I'm going to start with. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 18, verse one. At the same time, the disciples unto Yahweh Shai saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Yahweh Shai called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And why is that? Because you have to be retold, man. You have to be, um, you have to start over, man. It has to be a reset button on you when you come into this thing, man, because you have to realize that everything you've been taught in your life in this world is some bullshit. And you got to discard it and you have to start all the way over, man, because you don't know nothing. But these two guys came up here thinking they knew every goddamn thing, man. They think they had an answer for everything, you know. And if you watch the video, man, these guys will just bug the hell out, man. This one guy in the black here with the gloves on, you know, he studied everything. He was into some Indian shit, some book from the Indians and Sanskrit that he's into. But then he, he also said he was into everything. He studied everything. You know, had his pants above his ankles. I asked him, was he Muslim? Then he said he, he studied everything. He's everything, you know. And, you know, it's just... <laughs> anyway, man, these guys won't won't be converted and be like little children. Because with children, you know, children are humble. They're naturally humble. You can teach children things. They listen. You know, children are not uh, stubborn like adults are. You know, uh, adults... Like these guys here, grown ass men, you you can't tell them nothing. They, here it is, they don't know, damn, they don't even know who they are. They don't understand history. They don't know why they in these conditions. Like the guy who's speaking here in the all black with his with his hands in the air, you know, his whole solution for everything that so called black people are going through is economics. He don't know a damn thing about the history because when you well, I don't want to go off too too far on a tangent. Let me get back to where I'm going because the spirit taking me somewhere else. But hold on, let me come back. You have to be like a child, man. When you come up in this thing, you have to understand that you don't know nothing, all right? So let me get back to that parable, Matthew 18 and 3. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, ye should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And what did he say in the book of Acts, the, uh, the third chapter, about being converted? Because what's that going into? That's going into repenting. All right, Acts chapter 3. Verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And these guys here won't convert. All right. Their sins are not going to be blotted out, man. You know, which I believe, you know, the Lord could wake them up last minute. Who knows? But, you know, these guys are, are, are not converted, man, because they're already sold and, and, and built on what they think is, is correct and what they think is the truth. All right. Back in Matthew chapter 18, verse 4. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, because Yahweh Shai use a child as an example. All right, children don't know anything. They, they'll listen to you. They'll be quiet when you're speaking. Well, I mean, of course, children sometimes can be rude. They can be 
you know, just super busy and, and, and super occupied in their little minds, but it's easier to, to, to teach, like, like they say, when the, I think they say like the first five years of a, of a child's life are like the most important where he learns, you know, everything or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. You know, when, when, when they're that young, you know, they're, they're learning, they're like a sponge, they're learning everything, man. All right. So let me read that again. Say Matthew 18 and four. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. All right. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receive with me because you have these uh, the prophets. You have these men, the true prophets of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. They're going to be in that childlike spirit. They're going to be like children. They're going to be humble. They're going to be open to receiving correction, receiving rebuke, receiving uh, wisdom, knowledge and understanding. They're not going to buck up at, at authority. They're not going to buck up at the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, man. You see, this is uh, the book of Acts. Chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Uh, Acts 8 and 28 was returning and sitting in his chariot reading Isaiah, which is uh, Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. So the spirit came on Philip and said, go over there by that man that, that's reading that book. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, uh, understand, understandest thou what thou readest? He asked him, do you understand the book of Isaiah? Do you understand what you're reading? Which I believe, uh, he was reading, uh, Isaiah the 53rd chapter, uh, thir uh, Acts chapter eight, verse 31. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So he said, how can I understand unless, unless I'm taught by a man of understanding? And he wanted Philip to, to, to teach him. You see, so that, that was a humble statement, man. That's But you see these type of niggas here, they, they ain't finna come up there humble like that, man. They ain't gonna say, you know, I don't understand the scriptures. Can you, can you break it down to me? Can you help me understand why this is the way? Can you help me understand why this is the truth? Can you help me understand why you believe what you believe? Can you help me understand why you're out here doing this? You see, they came up here thinking they knew everything and was gonna teach me something or teach each other something, man. You see, but you don't see these buffoons out here, you know, making their body a living sacrifice to, 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 to teach what they, what they believe in. And from there, let me, matter of fact, let me jump to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. They ain't doing that, man. They ain't making their bodies a living sacrifice. You know, what, 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 what are you doing in the name of economics, man? This dude talking about economics is a solution, man. Dude, the economy is, look at all these people unemployed, man. That is not the damn solution, man. How, how you going to talk about the, you know, building businesses and black business and the black dollar and all that, man? That's a whole bunch of baloney, man. All right. In verse 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world. Let's get that word conform. See what that says in the Greek. Be not conform. Strong's G, 4964. Sus Sus which means to conform oneself, one's mind and character to another's pattern. So don't don't be like the pattern of this world, man. Don't fashion yourself to the ways of this world. This is what we were called to do in, 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 in order to do that because we were all born and raised in the fashion of this world. But we had to we had to be reborn through the spirit and power of Yah Bashim We had to start over. We had to be refreshed. We had to be renewed in the spirit. All right, Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's how we were we, we were reborn. This is how we became children again, because we had renewed our mind. We started over. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the most high. All right, this is Colossians chapter three, verse five. 
Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Let's get up that word, concupiscence. Concupiscence means uh, desire, craving, longing, desire for what is forbidden, lust. Are we supposed to mortify these things? We're supposed to starve off these, these ways as best as we can. Um, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of the Most High cometh on the children of disobedience, and the which ye also walked some time that ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another. Don't lie to the brothers. Don't lie to the believers. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, man. All right, this is the new man. We, we are those children, man. We, we are those, we, we've been renewed. We, we're starting over, okay? We, 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 we're putting off the ways of this world, man. And this is what it's all about. This is what this lesson is going into, man. Starting over. You, you can't, you can't, you have to be renewed, man. You don't know anything. You have to humble yourself down and be taught by men the correct way because this world taught us everything that was contrary and, and, and despised by Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And for that, the, the Most High through His Son is going to destroy uh, this world, the, this rulership, these, this kingdom, and, and a lot of people around us, man. And that should put fear in, in your heart and urge you to, to seek these work, to uh, seek the Lord and, and take heed to these words and make the necessary changes. Uh, speaking, you know, beginning with myself first. This is Ephesians chapter 4. Um, start at verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify unto the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of the Most High through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto la la lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness. But ye have not so learned Yahweh Shai, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shai, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is why these people can't put off the old man because they don't have the truth, which is in Yahweh Shai. That ye, again, for Ephesians 4 and 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. And I'm going to end on this. This is the book of St. Luke, chapter 5, verse 36. This is a parable going into the new wine and the new bottles. And he spake also a parable unto them. This is Jehovah No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh the rent. And the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved, okay? New understanding, new ways, new doctrine, new beliefs has to, we, we have, even though our bodies are old, we have to have a new mind, a new mindset, okay? We have to be uh, fresh, man, because... You can't do the things that you used to do and 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 uh, uh, and think that you're gonna uh, be a part of this truth and, and receive salvation and be on the Lord's good side as well, man. You have to you have to start over, or you have to forsake some things. You have to you know let go of some people. You have to um, you know you have to to make some sacrifices, man. You have to do these things because hey, again, new wine new wine must be put into new bottles. All right, you don't put a uh, new wine into an old bottle. And that's a, that's a great parable, parable there. And for the sake of time, I'm kind of speeding up and rushing through a little things real quick because I got to get ready to close this lesson out. But um, uh, Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm going to go ahead and end it up. Verse 39 says that's the end of the chapter. It says, No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. 
All right, so uh, Lord willing, uh, that was edifying, man. And uh, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah Bashim, Rakaku Dash, double honors to the elders and apostles, salutations and honors to the elect out there, man. Shalom.